Hello, I'm Chris Richmond, and today I've arranged to go and look at some church bells in a tiny village not far from where I grew up. Unlike most of the churches I've rung at, these bells are rung differently and I came across them after doing some research on other towers in the area. What evoked my curiosity was the fact that this particular tower has five bells, yet they are listed as being hung dead, and therefore are not able to be rung in the conventional way by swinging the bells, which means there must be some sort of chiming mechanism rigged up in the tower. So today, I've arranged to meet the church warden of St Andrews in Field Dorling, and we're going to go and look at the bells. Right, so we're currently on the A148, heading towards the tiny village of Field Dorling. A little village, um, not too far from the North Norfolk coast, not far from where I was brought up. And we shall be there in about 10 minutes. I arrive at the church at dead on two o'clock in the hope of finding the church warden, Ian Newton. Right, here we are then. Ah, you must be Ian. Hello. Chris Richmond. Right, so uh, here we are at Field Dorling. Now the bells aren't rung sort of full circle, the traditional way, are they? Um, so tell me more about this interesting piece of apparatus. Well, this was installed between 1983 and 1985 when the uh, wooden frame was found not to be strong enough to support proper ringing. I think it replaces an earlier single chiming apparatus put in at about 1935. So it's probable that the bells haven't been rung as a peal since around about the time of the First World War. Though they date back much earlier than that, um, they were cast in 1750 by Thomas Gardner in Norwich, and indeed the first bells here were recorded as early as 1417. Right. It turns out that this chiming mechanism is based on an idea by Reverend Henry Thomas Ellicum in the 1820s as a way to replace the reputedly drunken and unruly bell ringers of the day by allowing the bells to be rung by just one man. So, um, literally just pull on these and, and that chimes the bell. This one, unfortunately, is faulty at the moment. Right. So... circle ring but quite pleasant nonetheless. Yeah, it worked quite well and we use it at the beginning of services Yeah. Um, and of course occasionally sadly at funerals. Uh, do you have many services at this church now? or We, we have services twice a month uh, so we have a family service once a month and uh, morning prayer oh. once a month and oh. then services at Christmas and Easter. Right, let's see if I can do something with this. It's going to be a bit tricky without the, uh, the number four. But, uh, yeah, we'll have a go. Quite strenuous if you do it for 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, I should imagine it is. Um, as full circle ringing is sometimes, especially on some yes. rather challenging bells. The bells themselves are accessed by a tall ladder, but due to health and safety and insurance implications, I was not allowed to climb up and see the bells in all their glory. My journey leads me on to another church whose bells have suffered a similar fate. Right. I've since found out there's actually another church not too far away that also has eloquent chiming apparatus in it. 
like it was fitted much more recently. 11 miles further west in South Creek, the Church of Our Lady St Mary has also ditched full circle ringing in favour of Elecum chiming apparatus. I've arranged to meet the rector, Father Clive Wiley, to find out more. Right, Father Clive. Hello Chris, good to see you. I've just been to Phil Dorling and seen the system there. Now I see we've got a similar system here, but it's fitted much more recently, so how did we end up here? Well, when I was appointed as the incumbent here, the bells were silent. Um, because we were told that full circle ringing was quite dangerous because if we attempted it we could easily bring all the bells crashing down through the ceiling. So having just been through the restoration of the bells in North Creek um, and all the fundraising and form filling that that entailed, we decided that that wasn't an option for this congregation here at South Creek. So what was before us was either to leave the bells silent or to try and find an alternative. We would much rather have some bells uh, ringing this way rather than no bells ringing at all. Dating back to the 14th century, the tower originally housed three bells, but by 1552, records show that two new bells were added to form a ring of five. However, in 1826, the bells were melted down and used in the casting of five new bells by respected local bell founder, William Dobson of Downham. It is these bells that survive today, but the frame is still 100% original medieval timber. Now then, who's going to give a demonstration? Do you want me to do the pilgrim hymn for you? Yeah. And I must have a go myself. Exactly, feel free. Right. Yeah. So, uh, number one, yeah. this end, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Let's see if I can do oranges and lemons. <laughs> Nice and easy. Well right. done. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Pleasure. Uh, so that was a nice experience. I can actually now say I've had a go on a set of elegant chimes. Something I've never done before, and considering that, I think I actually did quite well. Being musical has its strong points. I suppose somebody who's not musical wouldn't have got on very well at all. But it was strange, because you do get some feedback of the weight of those hammers on the ropes. You can't pull two notes too quickly you probably heard on my rendition of oranges and lemons I was perhaps a little bit too quick but still we got through it now for the obligatory closing paragraph if you enjoy following my quirky if slightly self-indulgent adventures please don't forget to like and subscribe this filmmaking lark just wouldn't be worth it without the support of watchers like you. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.